Hi there, I'm Linda and this is Hutton's Valley Permaculture. We're back in the front veggie garden today where I thought I'd show you my recent plantings and how they're all growing. Also what I'm harvesting at the moment and what I need to be doing to ensure winter harvests. To start with, we'll have a look at the corn patch where I've got the golden bantam corn cob still producing and it's also got these little bean plants that have grown up on them. Uh, it has locked in some of the corn cobs, which will be hard to get out, but most of them have worked in well together with the beans. Just along from the corn, I'm preparing a garden bed. It'll probably have some brassicas in it, but I do need to get some compost on it first. And my little seedlings need to grow up a little bit bigger before I'm going to plant them out in my garden. This patch did have lots of carrot plants going to seed. I've left some that I've yet to harvest, but I've got a, a bucket load of carrot seeds and parsnip seeds for future harvests. But I anticipate lots of volunteers in this area. On the other side of the path across from my corn, next to this beautiful sunflower that's producing really well, and this is a, a different variety right next to it, looking lovely. I've got a bed where I've planted some eggplant, a little bit of basil. This was the garden bed where these plants were really slow taking off, but they're getting going now. And just underneath these little structures, I've planted some um, various basil plants. So I should be able to take this off, but it's been protecting it from birds. This is a little chili plant that I bought as quite a large plant. And I think um, you're much better off to get smaller plants to transplant because I found that this has just taken a, a lot to get going. I might take this off now. So underneath that little structure, I've got my basil plants that I've put in, but also looks like we've got some Swiss chard that's volunteering in this area. Just here is my largest chili plant. And this is the one that I dug up last season, put in a pot and moved to the greenhouse. And it transplanted really well. It's got some chilies at the bottom there that are starting to ripen ahead of anything else in the garden, but it's got lots of these lovely chilies coming on it. I think I can probably take all of these off now and give these plants a little bit more light. Just down here, I've got some little red radishes that are starting to grow. I did just take some seeds from my winter garden and put them in here and they've grown well and I've got some more over the other side. These ones fell off the plant into the path and I'll try, I'm trying to step over them but these are the ones that I scattered around into this garden. One thing I will have to be doing very soon is clearing sections of my winter garden. Instead of clearing the whole lot all at once, which is what I did last season, I think I'm just going to clear sections of each garden bed. I've got three and um, just do them at a time so that there's still some um, foliage and insects and flowers here for the birds and the pollinators and it's not all just wiped out all at once. This beautiful purple flower is on my endive or chicory plant. It's in that family and it's been really lovely. Jumping now from my winter garden past my, they're just capsicum plants that are coming along and an eggplant. We've got parsnips which are transplanted parsnips and they haven't turned out great. They're very leggy and uh, not a great um, root for baking with. And just down in this section, I've got a newly planted carrot bed where the seedlings, you can just see, they've just germinated and I'm trying to protect them from the birds so that they don't dig them all up. Next to my carrots, I do have these little shooting um, cauliflower plants, which are just starting to form little baby cauliflowers. Now it is the time of the 
cabbage white butterfly and there's plenty of eggs on all of these plants but I find that there's little birds around that eat the caterpillars. You can spot them over there. They move in and eat the caterpillars before they become too much of a problem. You can see the little blue wren over there. So leaving lots of insects in the garden to feed these beautiful birds really creates a nice balance. And they are the reason that I don't really want to uh, clear cut all of my winter growing space. So I'll definitely be trying something new there this year. Just along from my young carrot patch, I've got my eggplant and pepper garden. It's got various chilies in it and capsicums. These bonica eggplants, I think they're called, it does have flowers on it. Uh, I haven't found any developing eggplants yet, but they won't be far off. I've got various basil plants in here, which I've been harvesting from already. Some of the capsicums are getting fruit on them. And this Hungarian yellow chili has got beautiful fruit growing. So this garden has been coming along very nicely. It also has some volunteer tomatoes and Swiss chard, as well as the sprouting broccoli plant that I left in from the previous sort of garden plantings that I had. We're kind of jumping around a little bit, but just across this path, we have a volunteer tomato that's kind of sprawling out everywhere. It shouldn't be too long before these tomatoes start to ripen. And hiding in here, we've got some celery plants. I have been harvesting just uh, stalks off these plants. They're fairly small at this point, but I'm trying to keep up lots of water to them and uh, hopefully promote their growth a bit. Now this here is pretty interesting. It's one of my leek seed heads, but it seems like all the seeds are sprouting up the top there. Perhaps I should just use those as seedlings and plant them around the garden. So moving away from my celery plants and my volunteer tomato, we've got my cucumber bed, which has got quite a number of cucumber plants in it. There's just Masses of flowers in here and lots of these beautiful long cucumbers coming along as well as a smaller Lebanese variety. Now yesterday I did just put some extra mulch down, some grass clippings, just to help retain the moisture for these um, cucumbers that really do need to be well watered. I've just harvested two kilos of cucumbers recently and I've made my first batch of relish but there'll be plenty to harvest for the veggie basket that I'm putting together today and plenty for me for later in the week. Just across from my cucumbers I've got the start of my tomato bed. At this end I put tomatoes that were determinant so they don't get as high as the indeterminate variety and I was hoping they'd bush out a bit. They do have to contend with all this nasturtium and I've got some beans growing here as well. Something I'm getting very excited about is this echinacea. I haven't grown echinacea before and this is my first plant that's actually starting to pop up a flower head. So I'm really excited to see uh, what that turns out looking like. Now I've got various tomatoes coming along hiding in here. Rocket seeds which I generally just leave and um, hope that rocket spreads itself around. Moving a bit further along this tomato trellis bed, I've got the start of my big wall of beans. A lot of these I just couldn't keep up with and they have started to form seeds, which you can eat, but I'll also be saving seeds for next season. 
I've also, I didn't recall planting Bellotti bean seeds in here, but I must do it because they're in there as well. This tomato here is actually a volunteer and it looks like a cross between a blueberry tomato and maybe a tigerella. So it's going to be a really interesting tomato to try. That bed across there is just my bean bed. The bean is still producing well and the tomatoes, while they're small, they've all got tomatoes coming on them. And across the other side, more tomato plants. The kale's still going really well. Again, it doesn't seem to have too much of the cabbage white butterfly or the cabbage moth being too much of an issue. This little plant here seems to be struggling more than the other two, but I'm getting some really lovely harvests from those two plants, even though it's summer. My gorgeous pink hollyhock is starting to finish off. It has suffered right from the get-go with a bit of rust on its leaves. So it's struggled with that a little bit, but is still really beautiful. I did want to increase the variety of flowers in my garden this year, which I have managed to do so, with the zinnias being a real favourite. I think it's a bit of a, a meeting place for harlequin beetles on that one though. The chamomile I've been harvesting throughout summer and it's mostly finishing off in the garden now. There is a little tomato plant here that's only just getting going. It should have had enough light and sun so I don't know what its problem is but um, I do have right next to it the same variety that's got tomatoes coming on it so we definitely won't be missing out on the Jean Flamme tomatoes which are a nice little yellowy golden colour and a lovely flavour. I've still got a few beetroot in this garden bed. Uh, the golden beetroot uh, going to seed now and I might leave that because I could do with some more seeds of those. I do have other beetroots hiding in amongst the nasturtium. I've got my tigerella tomatoes. Now as you'll notice I'm not one for really tying up the tomatoes too much. They generally kind of flop over in my garden but I'm not too worried about that. I seem to get enough to eat. And this one here's another lovely zinnia flower. This was the first of my hollyhocks to come out, but it's definitely mostly finished off now. It actually was blown over in the, the wind and collapsed, so that was a bit of a shame. I've still got some artichokes in the garden, which I've mostly been leaving to flower because, again, the pollinators just love it. But just beyond the artichoke, I've got my huge, big sweet potato bed. And it's going to be pretty exciting to dig these up. Hiding in my sweet potato bed, I've got a rock melon plant that's starting to spread out a little bit. Just across from my sweet potato bed, past my masses of borage flowers that I, I let go, I've got my three pumpkin plants that I put in the area that I'm going to be building garden beds into this year. And the pumpkin plants have got quite a few pumpkins coming on them. There's the Queensland Blue. So we've got quite a good size starting to form there. And we've got this one here, which is actually probably a cross between a Kent style and a buttercup pumpkin. Very sweet, lovely pumpkins. Working my way through the jungle, I've got on this side a bed of rocket and radishes that I'm letting go to see. I've got one beautiful little radish which was in a, a mixed pack that I bought of heirloom radishes but it's just beautiful and I really want to collect the seeds so I've got that one singled out and I've got a mix of various radishes these little purpley radishes and then it's like I've got the little Spanish radish too so I'm going to keep those separate and this one is the amazingly beautiful 
radish with a, a really pink center. In this garden bed here, I've replanted some corn of, of the uh, golden bantam corn. It was the only one I could buy at the time. I would prefer to get a different variety of sweet corn because I found it wasn't very sweet, but it is still quite a tasty corn. Just over here, I've got uh, some turnips growing in amongst the corn. They will be harvested soon. And I did put in some Asian green seeds, but not too many came up. This one little red pak choy with its little friend down next to it seems to be the only one that was successful. Now over in this garden bed, I've got some brassicas, which they're not looking too flash, but they are still growing. So I'm actually quite pleased given it's summer and um, the pests that are here to attack them. I have recently planted a few more um, brassica plants in this garden, but I've also got my rosellas in here, which are competing a bit with the brassicas to get going. I don't know whether there's enough warmth left in um, the season for those to actually produce the flowers, but they're a lovely little plant and I'm glad I tried them. In a recent video, I cleared these two trellis garden beds and threw down handfuls of seeds. And I've been keeping these nets on them so that the birds can't kick them around. And it seems to be going quite well. So I've got the little bean plants that are starting to grow. They're Ukrainian beans. Some of the pea shoots are coming. There's the Swiss chard, the lettuce. No signs of auric at the moment, but as expected, no shortage of nasturtium. And same again on the other side with a few potatoes thrown in the mix. So hopefully soon I'll have um, a pretty good salad coming along. Now I have been sure to keep plenty of water on these little seedlings just to make sure that they don't dry out. This is one huge happy zucchini plant that is in the middle of one of my winter garden beds. And there's another zucchini hiding up the top here, but it doesn't seem quite as happy as the other plant. I'm wondering if the soil conditions just aren't the same. This is my top winter garden bed. So just in here are lots of beetroot plants that went to seed, but I think the birds have enjoyed most of it. I'll try and harvest some of the seeds if I can, but I'll be just sort of clearing little um, spaces like this and putting the compost on and then planting into that while maintaining these plants here. This is good chicken feed and it's also um, good just for uh, the small birds as well to eat insects off. So I'll be just doing little pockets of plantings within all of these gardens uh, and sort of do successional planting and it will successionally move these gardens into the winter garden. Okay, now let's take a look at my big pumpkin patch. So I've got quite a number of plants that I've planted up in this space which during winter is occupied by my chickens. So they do provide quite a bit of fertility. And there's Queensland blue pumpkin. They do get hidden in the grass somewhat. And like in my smaller pumpkin patch, I have this other variety as well. Growing pumpkins is always fun because you don't quite know what you've got in this space. I will move the chickens back in here after I've done the pumpkin harvest, but they usually find some that I've missed. I've got a couple more zucchini plants here as well as some more celery hiding in amongst it. And my seeding onions are coming along. Not too many seeds happening on them just yet, but they'll get there. And then moving along, I've got my current carrot patch, which is just about ready to thin out and get some baby carrots from. Now just along is my former potato patch, where I've recently just planted in some cauliflower cabbage and transplanted some leeks. They're not looking too flash. I might have done it too late 
but we'll see how they go. I have just put on some mulch around these little plants and um, I'm hoping that they'll get established. I transplanted those leeks from this space here. That's actually a path with lots of leek plants invading it. And if I'm not careful, there'll be a whole heap more. This is my replanted potato bed. I've got one potato starting to reshoot at this time, but I think a bit more rain's needed to really kick the others into life. And finally, I've got my other bean trellis, which is next to my greenhouse. This is the one that I usually grow beans on. And I've got three different varieties. So once my other beans all finish, hopefully these will have filled out and given me heaps of beans so I can continue the harvest. I hope you've enjoyed the tour of the veggie garden today. As you can see, the recent plantings are going pretty well and I'm harvesting plenty. I've got some seedlings on the go that I can fill into the winter garden as I create those little pockets and I'll hopefully continue the harvest right throughout the year. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Thanks so much for watching and bye for now.